Why do people use technology? Well, one theory to explain this is called the technology acceptance model. And that's a model that tries to explain why people would choose to use a particular technology in a work context. The theory states that they do so because they find the technology useful for their work and easy to use. Now to understand this theory, you have to consider when it was actually developed. The theory was developed in the late 1980s, when we had technologies such as email and word processing systems. And they could replace systems such as writing a letter by hand. It's important to understand that the theory says very little about the technology itself. What it says a lot about is what we believe or what we perceive this technology to be. In other words, whether a technology is actually useful or actually easy to use is not a matter of the technology, but a matter of our perceptions. And this may change, obviously. So depending on how much experience you have, how old you are, what gender you are, the perceptions of a particular piece of technology say an iPhone, say a mobile device or a tablet computer, changes, not because the technology is different, but because you and I are different. Now, what are the limitations of the technology acceptance model? Number one, it assumes that people plan their behavior and that they're rational in their actions. This means it assumes that we actually evaluate usefulness and ease of use of a technology when we develop an intention to use it and therefore actually use it. The problem with that is that people are not entirely rational in their decision making and not entirely rational in their behavior either. So not everything that we do is planned or reasoned. The theory doesn't really account for this. For example, you may remember when the first iPhone came out and people started to camp in front of the Apple store in order to get a hold of that technology. None of these people, or very very few of them, had the chance to actually trial the technology of that new iPhone prior to that. So, they couldn't have actually known about the usefulness or ease of use of the iPhone. But very clearly, all of them had an intention to actually buy and get one of these iPhones and use them. So, that can't really be called a reasoned action based on an evaluation of the technology. A second limitation of the theory is that it doesn't tell us, unfortunately, how to make technology easy to use or useful. In other words, it doesn't give us any design advice how we should build better technology other than this very general statement of make sure it's useful and make sure it's easy to use. I'm pretty sure that all technology is designed to that extent, but as we all know, not all technology is actually useful or actually easy to use. Which is why there are no alternative theories that suggest different reasons why people adopt new technology. For example, based on the expectations that they form about a technology, and whether these expectations are then confirmed or disconfirmed when they engage with the technology. This shows that every theory is good at explaining something and not so good at explaining other things. TAM is no different.